So what do we mean by self? Right? I mean, that's- That's a very big question, That's a Mark. big question, right? Right. If we can't, because if we can't, like, what does that mean? Because what we do, remember Thucydides in the Peloponnesian Wars, he says, when words lose their meaning, culture collapses. And so we need to re- right? Re-engage, revivify this new field of language. Let's just talk about self for a second, okay? Let's do it. Let's talk about self. So you got separate self. And let's try and do again, let's try and do, I don't know, a thousand pages in five minutes, but just to get the field together, because then we can talk about that, that image that you, you put into the field so gorgeously. So separate self is the experience of being a puzzle piece. I'm a puzzle piece. I'm individuated. I feel like there's a larger puzzle, <laughs> but society tells me there's not. I have my dignity, my boundaries of separate self. I'm a little idiosyncratic. If you look at the puzzle piece, I'm a little funny, <laughs> right? I'm a little weird, but you know, I try and kind of, I try and round my edges as best I can and kind of hobble along. And there's dignity to the separate self. Separate self is real, right? Yeah. I mean, the way we would say it in interior science, separate self exists in the mind of God. Mm -hmm. right? There really is Aubrey, there really is Mark, right? Right. There really is, right? These are, these are real categories. Yep. yep. But separate self is, is insufficient, right? It's insufficient, right? And that's the intuition of the interior sciences. It's an insufficient understanding of reality. So we realize, no, I actually have to, I have to actually realize my true identity. That's classical enlightenment, right? Which is the move from separate self to true self. Now, that move from separate self to true self, right, needs to be made by every human being. You don't need to do it by sitting on a mat, there's lots of ways to make that move, but we need to democratize enlightenment, right? We can, the democratization of enlightenment is critical. We cannot respond to existential risk without a new story, a new story of value. And in that new story of value, there needs to be a democratization of enlightenment in order to have an emergent order of a new cultural enlightenment that allows for open societies. Otherwise, closed societies win. Closed societies that are top-down win unless open societies can survive, and they can only do that if there's a shared ground of value, and that shared ground of value needs to be an accurate narrative of identity. And the democratization of enlightenment can't be through, I mean, I suppose maybe it can help, but words and concepts alone. I mean, I know for me in my Direct journey, experience. it's a gnosis. It's a gnosis, it's it, a feeling of it. it. It's a gnosis that then needs to be articulated in yes. shared language. Yes. Right, and, and what happens is either side, people err on both sides of it. Right. Right. In other words, you need. In other you experience words, something you can't even describe it, and then. I, it, I mean, here it is. So let's yeah. we look out your we look out your window. We see the ocean. Okay. Now, let's say you and I are walking down the street, and I say, "Man, right? Don't you love the ocean?" So the word allows us to access the experience. If we don't have the word ocean, we can't articulate it, then you and I actually have to walk to an ocean. We have to put our hands in it, <laughs> touch it together, right? So we think that words abstract. No, words actually hold experience. So by saying the word ocean, we can both evoke a shared experience called ocean. So we need both direct access to the experience of enlightenment, Right? And we need a new vocabulary, mm -hmm. which creates a shared space, which is a new story, which can evoke enlightenment, just like we evoke ocean. Fair? Fair. Fair. So here it gets beautiful. So I got to go from separate self to true self. We have to democratize enlightenment. And true self means the singular that has no plural. Total number of true selves in the world, one. We participate in this field, but it's not a field of one consciousness. That's a mistake. It's a field of one desire. It's one love, it's one breath, right? It's not just consciousness, right? It's sat, chit, ananda. It's, it's being, sat, chit, consciousness. So the inside of being is consciousness, but then it's ananda, eros, yeah. right? right? The inside right, of the inside right, is eros, right? It's a field of desire. So I, I experience myself in the field of desire, true self. And then in true self, I experience the radical interconnectivity of the whole field. It's an intimate field. Everything's interconnected. That's true self. But we can't stop there because then, I've, then, I, then I'm not a puzzle piece, then I'm, I'm a puzzle, right? The image of true self is there's a puzzle, no puzzle pieces. There's just this great, gorgeous, interconnected one. And then you tell your, your teacher, but I see these lines separating the puzzle pieces. That's an illusion, meditate more. No, that's not an illusion. Those lines separating those pieces are important because each piece is distinct. So now I move from true self to unique self. Mm. And unique self is the experience that I'm a puzzle piece with the capacity to complete the puzzle in a particular place and way that's not available to anyone else that ever was or, or will be. So true self plus unique perspective 
plus unique quality of intimacy equals unique self. Wow. Now, all of a sudden, we get every human being is an irreducible unique self. So unique self brings together all theories of identity, pre-modern, modern, and postmodern, into a simple second simplicity, though. And right, I'm a unique self. I'm an irreducible, unique expression of the love intelligence and love beauty and love desire. That's the initiating and animating eros of all that is. That lives in me, as me, and through me. That never was, is, or will be ever again. And as such, I've got this unique gift and this unique capacity to give that unique gift in my unique circle of intimacy and influence. That's five sentences. That's a theory of identity that's not made up. It's not conjecture. It's not contrived. Right? It's an actual, but that's not enough. Now, Unique self needs a larger context, the context of evolution, right? I live in an evolutionary field and the evolutionary field lives in me. I don't live in evolution, lives in me, literally, that's the science, right? In other words, every muon, every quark, every hadron, every proton, every atom, all the way up the evolutionary chain, it's all literally in me. So evolution's alive in me. My deepest heart's desire is the desire of evolution. So unique self plus evolution equals evolutionary unique self. And then one last stage. So evolutionary unique self is a puzzle piece that unlike unique self completes the puzzle, evolutionary unique self is Aubrey actually evolves the puzzle. That's shocking. That's a shocking realization that actually Aubrey has the capacity in a way that Mark doesn't to evolve the source code, to evolve the puzzle in a way that no one that ever was, is, or will be ever can do other than him. Mm -hmm. There's dignity. There's, right, there's a sense of, right? And we got one last step. But then I need a larger context, right? Where are my brothers and sisters? Where do I, right? So it's not just unique self, it's unique self symphony, right? That actually I participate, I play my instrument in a unique self symphony, which is not a top down in position, it's a bottom-up, self-actualizing cosmos, which actualizes in the movement towards uniqueness. In other words, the simple rule of cosmos, and in complexity theory, simple rules move us to wide complexity, right? The movement of cosmos is a move towards ever greater and deeper uniqueness. So as we move towards becoming unique selves, giving our unique gifts, and we give them together, we come together, then we have a planetary awakening in Eros through unique self-symphonies. That's a vision. That's, now we have a story, mm. not a conjecture, not a, not a made up story. Now we're beginning to have shared language. Now, 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 we're, now, now we've got a vision of self. So now when, when Aubrey and Christina, right, right, that's this brother and sister, there's these two unique selves meeting who have unique gifts, right? Who can then perhaps play an instrument in one particular way together in the unique self symphony. But now we have a language for it, right? Now we can begin to find our way.